What is the role of company culture in the success of a startup? Yeah. I, I know it's a generic question, but what is your personal philosophy about that? I want them to hear that. Well, I think, by and large, pretty much all of the most successful tech companies, and by most successful I mean over a long run, all had very strong cultures. I mean, Microsoft was a certain kind of place. Uh, uh, Hewlett Packard was a certain kind of place. Uh, and, and everybody sort of knows what it is. There are certain things that are valued. There are certain types of personalities and certain b- behaviors that are the, you know, these are the stars. This is how we do things. This is opposed to companies that don't particularly have a strong culture. So that's, that's point one. Okay. Point two is, I think, you know, founders play an enormous role in setting the tone of, uh, of the company culture. Uh, and, and whether they do it consciously or not, certainly if they do it consciously, even more so. But, um, I mean, for many years, uh, you would see at Microsoft all of these mid-level managers that were little Bill Gates clones or, 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 or trying to be. And I can only imagine that now at, you know, at Facebook, people are trying to figure out how to be the next Mark Zuckerberg, you know? Lots so, of Adidas shoes. What's it? Lots of Adidas uh, sandals. Yeah. So in my situation, and I'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll just spend a brief 30 seconds on a little bit of background. Desp- I went to MIT. I went to business school. I dropped out. But I'm mostly self-educated in computers. What I did after college, and I did grow up in the 60s, is I was a disc jockey at a progressive rock radio station, and then I was a meditation teacher, and I got a master's degree in counseling psychology, Uh, um, so a very non-traditional kind of background, and stumbled into personal computers. I was kind of waiting for them to be invented, had always been very good at math, no, and fell in love with PCs, and they changed my life, Uh, but the, uh, but and this is so early, like I got into PCs in 78. It was like three years before the IBM PC even, uh, even came out. And um, Lotus became very successful unexpectedly, just to give you some idea. Uh, we got funded on a plan that said we'd do $3 million in revenue. In our first year, we did $53 million. Uh, and then we tripled to $150 million in 84. Uh, and we went public in 83, and we went from zero to 2,000 employees in, in three years during the time I was the CEO. So we were the hyper-growth company um, of the 80s. And, and a number of the things that apply to the current hyper-growth companies also apply to us. One was we were so successful, there was nobody to tell us we couldn't do stuff, you know. So that was, that, that was, familiar. That, that was great. And given my background... I had always had a bad attitude as an employee. I had problems with authority, and that <laughs> you gave you a little bit of my background. And here I was, the CEO of this company. I said, "Let's. I want this to be the kind of place that even somebody like me would like to work at." And so, uh, and because there was nobody to say we couldn't do that, um, we built a culture that took people very seriously. And and uh, let me just give you one for instance which is like lots of companies have corporate values. Mostly they get ignored or paid lip service to. You know, well, we value openness and accountability and transparency. What we did at Lotus was we not only had corporate values, but we also measured our performance on them. We did a very rigorous annual survey of all the employees on the quality of work life, anonymous and confidential. And we not only measured how things were going, but we had management accountability because a part of managers' bonuses was literally tied to how well the people who worked for them evaluated them, not just talking the talk, but walk the walk of corporate values. So we structured the thing in a way that said, look, uh, accountability is important, openness is important, and we're going to measure it. And we're going to hold people accountable to it. And that's the way you do anything in business. That's the way you develop products. That's the way you make your your financial numbers. We just basically did it around kind of people issues with a commitment to very progressive values. So we had 
Back in the 80s, we had an employee diversity committee without gays and lesbians. This is like 1983. This is like, you know, 10 years before anybody did this because I said, I want this to be the kind of place that everybody can feel comfortable, you know, working at. Everybody has something to contribute. So that's just, that's just who I am. And uh, I was fortunate at Lotus to have an opportunity to do this big experiment. And the, the legacy of Lotus is not so much in product. There was 123 supplanted by Excel. There was Lotus Notes acquired by IBM in the mid-'90s. But there are thousands of Lotus alumni for whom, as the East Coast company was in Cambridge, so it's, it's less felt out, out here. Yeah. It was the most important employment experience of their life, and they carry things forward with them to all the other places they've worked about how we did things and how we handled things. That might that, be what you're most so proud of. I am most legacy. proud of that. Yeah, I am, that I'm, very, I'm very proud of that.